The third quarter earnings for Dropbox beat analyst estimates. Let's look at this stock a little closer to figure out whether it's a buy or a sell. Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott, and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Dropbox's stock by analyzing their financial ratios and dissecting their financial statements so we can determine if the stock is a buy or a sell. Dropbox is a file hosting service. It was founded in 2007. It has experienced criticism and generated controversy for issues including security breaches and privacy concerns. Dropbox has been blocked in China since 2014. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, market cap $7.9 billion. They're trading at $19.15 a share and they have 263 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. Free cash flow is how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows, then you discount that number back to today's value. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. This company has positive and growing free cash flow each year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's a revenue minus expenses and they have negative net income each year. Their revenue looks really good. It grows about 20% on average per year. It almost doubles from 2016 to 2019. This is their income statement. The top line is revenue. In 2019, they had $1.6 billion of revenue. The expenses that are directly tied to generating the revenue were 411 million. So their gross profit is a difference between those two numbers, 1.3 billion but they had 1.3 billion of operating expenses. So their operating income was negative $80 million. Each year they have negative operating income. That's the reason they have negative net income each year because their expenses are so high. So obviously it looks really bad that a company has negative profit, but let's look a little deeper to understand why. The company provides lots of stock-based compensation. In 2019, they provided 261 million to their employees. In 2018, it was 650 million. In 2017, it was 164 million. So if they didn't provide the stock-based compensation to their employees, they would have positive net income. Stock-based compensation is a way of paying employees with equity. This is a non-cash item, so it must be added back on the statement of cash flows. This is the statement of cash flows, and the top is the operating cash flow. And the way you calculate operating cash flow, it starts with net income. In 2019, it was negative 53 million. Then you add back the non-cash expenses from the income statement. Depreciation was 173 million, and stock-based compensation was 261 million. They also had an increase in changes in working capital of 145 million. So they actually had $528 million of operating cash flow, even though they reported negative net income. So operating cash flow is a better indicator of a company's health than net income. And the way you calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow minus capital expenditures. So they do have positive free cash flow. So that's what you should look at when you value a company, the free cash flow, not so much a net income because that's a lot of accounting. Let's look at a capital structure. They have no debt. 808 million of equity and the cost of equity is 8.77 percent to calculate cost of equity we use the capital asset pricing model and part of the cap m formula is the beta the beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market and their beta is 0.84 so the stock moves less than the market so their weighted average cost of capital is the cost of equity 8.77 percent and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 9.7 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $8.8 .8 billion. We divide that by 263 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 33.32. They're trading at 19.15, so they're trading at a 43% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street also says the stock is undervalued, just not as much as me. Their valuation is $23.46. The stock was over $40 at its peak, but it's been pretty steady for the past year and a half, around $20, $25. If you invested $100 when his company IPO'd, you'd be down to a little over $60 today. That's much worse than the S&P and the NASDAQ. 
This company has never paid a dividend and doesn't plan to pay a dividend in the future. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd, you'd have $6,700 today. That's a 33% loss. They had 11 million paying users in 2017 that jumped to 12.7 million, then jumped again to 14.3 million. They seem to be doing a good job growing their company. This is the average revenue per user, and that has also been increasing from 112 to 118 to 123. The company has a $725 million credit facility in case it runs into a cash crunch when running its business or if it needs money to acquire another business. They currently have no outstanding debt against this revolving credit facility, but they do have $60 million in letters of credit outstanding under the facility. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE for the market is 16.3, the median is 15.0, PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Remember when we looked at the financials earlier, they have negative net income each year? Another benefit of having negative net income each year is you don't have to pay taxes, which helps conserve cash. The average price to sales ratio is 4.9, the median is 2.0. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. There are 3.0, so they're between the median and average. The average price to book is 4.6, the median is 2.3. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're at 6.2, so they're worse than the median and average. Equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet. They don't have any debt, so we don't have to look at the interest coverage ratio. The average ROE in the market is 12%, the median is 12%, ROE is net income over equity. They're negative since they have negative net income. The average current ratio is 1.8, the median is 1.3. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can cover their current liabilities. Current assets are assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. Examples are cash accounts receivables and inventory. Current liabilities are debts and payables due within 12 months. Examples are current debt and accounts payable. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Adobe, Akamai, Blackberry, Dyn Durham, F5, Fortinet, Microsoft, Oracle, Palo Alto, Square, VMware, and Wix, all in the same industry as Dropbox. And if Dropbox has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they're worse in PE, they do have a better price to sales and price to book than the average. They're doing fine in current ratio. Negative ROE, so they're worse than the average. They have zero debt, just like F5 and Fortinet. Their market cap is lower than average at $7.9 billion. And they don't pay a dividend. Most companies don't pay a dividend in this industry. To summarize, I have them trading at a 43% discount. Their ratios and financials look decent. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to do a private Zoom session with me, receive a custom valuation, or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.